ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣಿ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಮಃ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಚರಿತ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಜೀವನ ತಥಾ ಪವಿತ್ರತಾಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಯತಿರಾಜಾಯ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಸೂರೇ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ಸುಖಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ಥಾಪಹಾರಿಣಿ ಓಂ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಲಮಾಂಗಲ್ಯ ಶಿವೆ ಸರ್ವಾಥಸಾಧಿಕೆ ಶರಣ್ಯ ತ್ರಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರೀನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ವಿ ವರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮಂತ್ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ವೀಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟುಕ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವೀಕ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಳಗಾಮ್ ಸೊ ಟು ರಿಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಚುಲೇಟ್ ಟಿಲ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ವಿ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ವೈ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಶುಡ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ದಟ್ ಟು ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ವರ್ಣ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಡಿಲಮಾ ದಟ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ನಿತ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮ ನೈಮಿತ್ತಿಕ ಪ್ರಾಯಶ್ಚಿತ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಡೈಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಆಬ್ಲಿಗೇಟರಿ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಡಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸೊ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಬಿಗಿನ್ಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಗೇವ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಡಿಕ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ then he comes to the objective explanation of what is duty swami says to give an objective definition of duty is thus entirely impossible because it is relative in the sense of connected with the country and culture duty changes so how to perform duty then the common idea regarding any karma swami ji ke ಒನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಗೇವ್ ಎ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಜೂರ್ ಎನಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಜೂರಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಚ್ಯೂ ಇಂಜೂರಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿನ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ದ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ವಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಪುರಾಣೇಶು ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಚನದ್ವಯ ಪರೋಪಕಾರ ಪುಣ್ಯಾಯ ಪಾಪಾಯ ಪರಪೀಡನ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಜನರಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ವರ್ಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ taking this as a preliminary swamji proceeds saying <coughs> a duty even uh, he quotes beginning with bhagavad gita say say karmanya bhirtah asam siddhim labate narah sadharma nidhanam sadharme nidham shreyah paradharmo bhayavah so first perform duty according to your birth and then according to your position in the society that was the introduction swamji gave and try to explain it there are three steps while uh, swamji started explaining it swamji begins number first step one what the swamji says let us do that duty which is ours by birth and when we have done that let us duty let us do the duty which is ours by our position in life and society so this is the first explanation of doing one's duty first according to the birth then follow according to one's position in life and society i gave a few examples trying to explain this i remember one more today in america during four years of civil war there was one university yale university y a l e yale yale university there due to civil war the university was closed i think uh, almost for four years the university was closed and of course due to war 
no student entered the university none of the teachers were there in the university like that happened two years back due to corona <coughs> all over the world so in the same way due to their local civil war the university was practically closed neither te neither the teachers nor the students were there at the university but the principal by name mr evel e w e l l evel mr evel the principal of the college or the university he was coming to the college or the university every day at the same time suppose let us say that he was coming earlier before the war at 9 he was coming at 9 am every day all four years he used to come to the university at 9 He was not sitting in the university. He, though I think even the peon was not there in the university, except the principal. None of them were there in the whole campus. But the principal used to come to the university, ring the bell after every one hour. Every one hour there will be a ringing of the bell to say that the period is over. Next shift over to the second period, third period, fourth period, etc. Whole day he used to be in the university. ring the bell after every one hour close the college or the university and go back at the right time he has done it for four long years that is doing duty according to the position in the society he is a principal in the society not expecting government did not ask him to do neither students were interested during those times none of the staff asked him why you came why you did not come but the principal was so much involved in his own duty that he carried on this for four long years in the ali university that's what swamiji is saying though they didn't know about karma yoga neither god realization that's why swamiji says if even ishwar chand vidyasagar shri ramkrishna says to ishwar chand vidyasagar he was doing so much social work during his times shri ramkrishna went and met him and told him what he told he has got gold hidden inside a little bit of understanding will <clears throat> make that goal to he can utilize it in the sense he is focused only on the social service a little inclination to spirituality same thing done with the idea of spirituality will bring out that the power of the consciousness that was shri ramkrishna means that is why swamiji says first begin your duty according to your varna then according to your position in the society and coming to the second point swamiji says later on you swamiji says later on a change will happen a greatest work is done only through when there is no selfish motive any work can be great only if there is no selfish motive hence swamiji says how to approach it it is work through the sense of duty that leads to work without any idea of duty begin with the idea of duty continue it strengthen it then you will do the duty without the idea of duty we have to begin with the duty idea of duty when all work will become worship ne something higher then will work be done for its own sake to do this you need to attenuate the ego niswarthata if without attenuating the ego this position or this state of mind will never come that's why swamiji says limiting selfishness we open the way to an unlimited expansion of the real nature of man limiting the selfishness we open the way to an unlimited expansion of the real nature of man when if real nature nature of man has to manifest then you have to reduce your selfishness so samji explains begin with the idea of duty continue it slowly it will lead to attenuation of the ego that will lead to expansion of our consciousness by attenuating the ego um few days back i was reading an incident in the life of swami akhandananda saraswati samji actually when he mentions this point Swamiji says the goal of all yogas karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga raj yoga japa yoga mantra yoga any yoga you tell the goal of all yoga 
ಈಸ್ ಟು ಅಟಿನ್ಯೂಯೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಗೋ ಅಹಂಕಾರತ್ವ ವಿತ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೂ ಆಲ್ ದ ವರ್ಕ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಪರ್ಟೇನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ದ ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ಯು ಗೋ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವಿನಿಟಿ ಹೆನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಜಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಗೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಅಟಿನ್ಯೂಯೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಗೋ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಯಾರ ಕರ್ಮಿ ಯಾರ ರಾಜಯೋಗಿ ಯಾರ ಭಕ್ತಯೋಗಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಎ ಭಕ್ತ ಯೋಗಿ ಹಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಲೀಲಾ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಸಮಾಧಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಯೋಗಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಜಗತ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗಿ ವೈಲ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಲೀವ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಲೀವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫಿಶ್ನೆಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಅನ್ಸ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಎ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫಿಶ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಐ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಖಂಡಾನಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಐ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ಹೀ ಟುಕ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಅದ್ವೈತ ವೇದಾಂತ ಮಂತ್ರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಶಂಕರ ಅಂದ ಇನ್ ಹರಿದ್ವಾರ ಐ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ವೆರಿ ಆಫನ್ ಟು ಮೀಟ್ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಶಂಕರ ಅಂದ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟೇ ಇನ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ನ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬಾಂಬೆ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಹರಿದ್ವಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಶಂಕರ ಅಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಯುವರ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಕುಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎನಿ ಸೀಟ್ ಎ ಬರ್ತ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಎ ಬರ್ತ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೀಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಡಿನ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಎ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೆಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ನೈಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಖಂಡಾನಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ನೋ ಬರ್ಕ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಡೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಜರ್ನಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಕಿಕ್ ಅಖಂಡಾನಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಆಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಹಿ ಇಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಟರ್ನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ದ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹಿ ಡಿನ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಎ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಈ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಓಲ್ ನೈಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದ ಸೀಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಖಂಡ ಅಂದರೆ ಕೂಡ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದ ಸೀಟ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಟ್ ಸಿಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ರಿಸೀವ್ ದಟ್ ಕಿಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ವಾಸ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಅಪ್ಸೆಟ್ ಅರೆ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಎನಿ ಯಾವ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಮೆಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಖಂಡಾನ್ಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾರೇಟೆಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಜಿ ಕ್ಯಾ ಹೋ ಗಿಯಾ ಕಲ್ ರಾತ್ ಕೋ ಇತ್ನ ಮಾರ ಓ ಮುಚ್ಕೋ ಈ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ದೆನ್ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಸೇಸ್ ಓ ತೋ ಹೋ ನಾಯಿತ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಓ ತೋ 
वो तो होना ही था एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर द सॉन्ग ऑफ संग सन्यासी भाई स्वामी जी देह बाड़ी बीड़ली अब नदी तेलली काल हार सिंगर अदूस बी दट ई विल गिव द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन दट द कन्ड कूवेपूस हिट दैन नो मोर हौ बाडी लीव सर गोस् इट्स अ टास्क इज डन लेट कर्म फ्लोटिड डाउन लेट वन पुट गार्लैंड सान आंदर कि दिस फ्रेम से नाट नो प्रेज आर् ब्लेम कैन बी नो प्रेज आर् ब्लेम कैन बी वेर प्रेज आर् प्रेज एंड ब्लेम आर् ब्लेम आर् वन दस बी दौ काम सन्यास इन बोल्ड से ओम तत्सत् ओम द संग ऑफ सन्यास इन वेरी वंडरफुल सांग दिस स्टेटमेंट दट्स वै सांग दिस इज अटीनियशन ऑफ दिस ईगो इज वेरी इंपार्टेंट फॉर आल योग एंड आलो फॉर कर्म योग दट्स वै से वेन यू बिगिन वित् ईडिया ऑफ ड्यूटी यू विल मूव टूवर्ड्स दट पाथ अटीनियटिंग दट ईगो बिकॉज that in expansion of real nature or the manifestation of the real nature of man should happen now samji goes to the third step where he explains i had stopped at this point samji says when we start performing in the beginning stages the duty duty is seldom sweet duty in this world is seldom sweet so to make it sweet what should be applied the grease of love Swamiji says, "It when love greases its wheels, that it runs smoothly. It is a continuous friction. Otherwise, doing duty without love is a continuous friction." And Swamiji makes a wonderful statement: "Duty is sweet only through love, and love shines in freedom alone. Love shines in freedom alone. Nowhere else." so one who has not understood this freedom cannot really love anybody on this earth i gave the example of a dog uh, the road the road less traveled i gave that book a famous psychological book a book of a psych- psychiatrist has written that book the road less traveled he gives the example of a dog etc in that uh, why does a man love a dog He, he explains because he expects the dog to be his slave. No man will like no man or woman on this earth will love a dog which does not obey his owner. <laughs> the dog which does not obey his owner will never nobody will keep that dog at home. <laughs> so the idea is in freedom alone. Where does love shine? In freedom alone, one who is free can really love. That's why we say the love of Krishna, the love of Rama, the love of Paramahamsa, the love of Vivekananda, the love of Holy Mother is true love. We are trying to love in the path. That's why Swamiji says, "Duty is sweet only through love, and love shines in freedom alone." And he adds one step to it. The highest expression. Where how where can you find the highest expression of freedom? Swamiji says. the highest expression of freedom is to forbear this is one wonderful statement the highest expression of freedom is to forbear titiksha is to forbear samji is linking freedom to forbearance this is something very unique you have to give attention to this word highest expression of freedom is to forbear if you see in the life of holy mother so many things used to happen in and around the jairam bati at her home either at kamarpukur or at dakshineshwar never she has uttered a single word against all the activity that went on around her simply forbear she forbore past tense of forbear is forbore so she forbore all through you know that famous incident she came all the way from jairambati when sri ram krishna himself for at dakshineshwar rudaya and all those they made a big mess saying that most probably holy mother had left at a particular inauspicious time and come to dakshineshwar leaving her home at an inauspicious time hence sri ram krishna had a fractured hand then again she went back all through neither she was not it is night and she was not allowed inside the room also 
she has to go back all the way back to jairambati and then come on some other day it's traveling 90 miles or something so that too in 1960s not in 2022 with a flight running all through the way no walking or going by a bullock cart she has to go over that is for friends because she has understood what is freedom i was thinking why sri ramkrishna did it i was not happy with sri ramkrishna's way he handled holy mother but after reading karma yoga i got a link though i could not get answer from sri ramkrishna for that incident i was thinking why did sri ramkrishna did it like that what was the lesson that is hidden in that incident but once i read this karma yoga we came to this sentence the highest expression of freedom is to forbear then and understood forbearance comes through freedom otherwise lower area where he fritters away through his anxiety depression all those things comes one who is enslaved to all his mind and small petty ego and to this body consciousness one who has gone beyond this beyond the cage only can forbear otherwise he will forbear but inside there will be grumbling at the front end it seems that he or she is forbearing all those things but deep within there will be a guilty attitude or attitude of revenge vengeance or attitude of uh, very wrong uh, negative ideas of anxiety and fear etc that's why swami says the highest expression is through forbearance to forbear so how many incidences there are connected with holy mother in that day now coming for today's discussion we will continue i had stopped at this we will continue samji says now the virtue he had given the three steps step 1 position your birth and position in society next is carry on your duty for this own sake then transcend the duty for work work for work sake with an unselfish attitude attenuating your ego third step is love shines in freedom alone and the highest expression of freedom is in forbearance now he is adding the virtue with which one has to perform this duty what is that virtue in man or woman important virtue is chastity samji se chastity is the first virtue in man and woman chastity brahmacharya so samji says in the whole world if suppose somebody says men are not so pure samji says if some women are not pure no being on this earth cannot be impure and unchastised if he comes in contact with a chaste chaste and pure man and woman so he makes statement what brutality is there which purity and chastity cannot conquer what brutality is there which purity and chastity cannot conquer a good chaste wife samji explains a bit on this i will read a few sentences from this a good chaste wife who thinks of every other man except her own husband as her child and has the attitude of a mother towards all men a woman has to a married woman look upon except her husband all other men as her child as her children will grow next step is with this attitude what will be the outcome will grow so great in the power of her purity that there cannot be a single man however brutal who will not breathe an atmosphere of holiness in her presence if an woman can have this attitude this wise this uh, applies to men also with contra idea if that is the attitude of men and women no even a brutal can will breathe 
and the air of purity in her or his presence. No, Samji says, no single man, however brutal, who will not breathe an atmosphere of holiness in her presence. Reading this, I remember Mother Sita. Um, in Valmiki Ramayana, what happens in Ashoka Vana? She stays almost for 10 months. According to Valmiki Ramana, she stays nearly 10 months, not exactly one year, it is almost 10 months in that Ashokavana. Ashokavana is in the Ravana's kingdom, Lanka. Then, while explaining this, Valmiki Maharshi himself will ask us a question, Purupaksha. How could Mother Sita live so long a single woman? without any support, either from her husband or from the neighbor or from the people around her or from the woman around her, how could she stay in an enemy campus for ten more long months without being troubled by Rama, Ravana? Of course, he had a verbal trouble, but she could, he could not, he could never touch Sita. He came, but he could not. How could she stay there for ten long months, could leave there. Stay means leave. Then Valmiki Maharshi makes a wonderful statement. Rakshitam Svena Shilena. Rakshitam Svena Shilena. Protected by her by own character, she stayed for long, ten long months. It's not Ravana who protected. Sorry, Rama. Rakshitam Svena Shilena. She was protected by her own chastity. Ravana could never dare to touch Sita. Who will tell all these things to our young children? Eh? What we think of Ramana, their discussion, whether Ramayana happened, why do you worry about Ramayana? Sri Ramakrishna says, whether it happened or not, don't trouble yourself with all this quarrel. Think of the exposition of such a character in those incidences. Rakshitam Svena Shilena. Huh? Such a wonderful character. Then Samji, that's why he concludes, that man, again, who wants to be a teacher of religion, that man, again, who wants to be a teacher of religion, must look upon every woman as his mother and always behave towards her as such. So this is for the preacher, teacher of religion. One who wants to preach religion should look upon every, for a woman, a man as his child, for a man as woman, as her mother. Otherwise you will never gain strength. Without chastity and purity, duty in the real sense cannot be performed. This is the first virtue, Samji says, this is the first virtue one has to adopt while performing one's duty. So that's why now Samji elogizes Hogalivike, elogizes the motherly love in this world. The position of the mother is the highest in the world. Because she performed um, mother, of course, I have one uh, Purva Paksha to this. Uh, mother has this attitude till the child will not quarrel with her mother. The day the children react to mother, then there will be a different story. So, this I apply when <laughs> such sentences come. I apply to a state where the child is helpless. Then the mother will have an unselfish attitude, motherly love, to, unselfish love towards her child. But it is not same through all through. It's my personal opinion. Mother should not uh, start quarreling with me. All so many mothers are sitting. <laughs> I have made my explanation regarding that. So Swamiji says, the position of the mother is the highest in the world. That's why he says, I'll just read two, three sentences from here. Blessed indeed is the man who is able to look upon woman as the representative of the motherhood of God. Blessed indeed is the woman to whom man represents the fatherhood of God. Blessed are the children who look upon their parents as divinity manifested on earth. 
I like the sentences of Swamiji. Though we know all these things, the way Swamiji expresses is very beautiful, for me at least. Blessed are the children who look upon their parents as divinity manifested on earth. Actually, though we read it, look upon women as a representative of motherhood of God, look upon men as the fatherhood of God, look upon the parents as divinity manifested on earth. When we were young, though we knew it is difficult to adopt and practice. That's why mere reading of these things will not manifest as actions in our character, as a personality. How does personality will develop? By performing actions, you will develop a character. But though it is philosophically, ideologically, we understand this statement, why is it that it, does, it is not converted into actions Karma ke barodila. Why? Because at the first place, the person should have belief in what this say statement means. Believe. Yes. Women are the motherhood of God. Father is the fatherhood of God. My parents are divinity on earth. Though they may be looking otherwise. But from a subjective standpoint, first there should be a belief. Second step, convert this belief into conviction. Convert this belief into conviction. When conviction comes, it will be translated into work or action. Until it is converted into conviction, it will not manifest as karma. We lack conviction in all these things. Though we read Sita, Rakshitam, Svenashilena, but it is not convinced. Why can not convinced? How do you say it is not convinced? But when weaker moments of there, when there are weaker moments, weaker moment in the mind, it accepts the weakness of the mind, not the Rakshitam Svenashilena. Why? Mind is not convinced. When it is convinced, it itself will become Uddhared Atmanatmanam. It will convince the lawyer self not to this, take this action. This lawyer self will say, he will give suggestion to perform some weakening actions. But the higher self, it is convinced. Higher self means higher mind. When the mind is totally convinced, it itself will take care of the lower mind. It will say, don't perform this because Sita lived like that. Vivekananda lived like that. I read in what is the duty. Samji has told, if it is convinced, it itself will give guidance to the lower mind and uplift it. Until unless we are convinced, this will not be converted into karma. That's why Swamiji says, the first virtue is chastity and purity. Be convinced. Until, unless we are convinced, it will not be converted into actions. Conviction. That's why if you see, that principal had that conviction, I will perform. Today, if, if we narrate all those incidents, there are so many incidences in our Indian culture also, long back. I, I, whatever I remember, I just uh, narrated you. So he was totally convinced of his position as a principal and he is there to preserve the university. He was totally convinced whether the world accepts or does he get a salary or secondary. When does this world war will, will end? Who knows? After it got completed, we say it took four years. But when we are in that civil war, we don't know when it will conclude. When we were in the midst of corona, who knew when it will end? When we are out of it, we say it took two years. When we are in the process, we don't know when. With that uncertainty, when we are in uncertainty, it is difficult to maintain the strength, strength of the mind. When we, everything is in a very wonderful way, it's easy to perform our actions. During anxiety and uncertainty, our mind are tested. Only during anxiety and uncertainty, we have to test our mind. Not through our glow, when the stars are very lightning in the sky. That's why, during that uncertainty, how could he pass that? Because he was totally convinced that I am the principal of this university, I am going to preserve this college 
for the future and it's a challenge for me i will do it he was convinced that's why until unless we are convinced of the chastity and purity and we are convinced of the idea that women are the motherhood of god we never practice this virtue by following it it will remain in the book that's why samji says stab a chastity he gives an our idea towards our attention sorry not the idea he draws our attention towards chastity and purity and representing the mother and father as the motherhood and fatherhood of god even uh, when um, um while explaining the duties of women of this country in future india while i will explain explaining in uh, that bhakta samelna la two weeks back there samji i quoted one more sentence of samji we have two ways of worshiping god samji samji is explaining we have two ways of explaining god one is through nirguna nirakara second one is saguna sakara with attributes and without attributes saguna is with attributes nirguna is without attributes personal god and uh, impersonal god so samji says all men of this world represent the nirguna nirakara aspect of god samji is explaining of samji explaining the men and women of the, of the world so men represent the nirguna nirakara aspect of the god then what does woman represent she is the first manifestation of god which rocks the cradle samji is explain of mother what do you mean by mother samji says she is the first manifestation of saguna sakara saguna is the first aspect of god when brahman united with maya the first manifestation is ishvara what we call chaturmukha brahma hiranyagarbha that is called saguna brahman so samji says that is the state of mother she is the first manifestation of god which rocks the cradle so same idea samji defines in different ways in different uh, chapters you have to if you can hold on to one theme of samji then you will be able to understand many things all together so here says blessed are the children who look upon their parents as divinity manifested on earth next samji continues and tries to give one incident from mahabharata with which he will conclude i will also conclude this chapter this chapter and we will continue with the next chapter on next sunday so samji begins the only way to rise it rise is by doing the duty next to us next to means what is at hand next to us and thus gathering strength go on until we reach the highest state so we we will do the, the duty at hand and continue and attain the highest state so to elevate, to give an example samji now narrates one incident from mahabharata you all know because samji is narrating there may be some new faces here coming to ashrama who might have no might not have heard this story for their sake i am re- repeating the story a sanyasi as usual as a old sanyasi now today sanyasi golden day sanyasi he had gone to a forest to do tapas he had performed tapasya for so many years or months not known but he had performed tapasya for a long time then one day he was sitting under a tree in the forest some dry leaves fell on his head he just saw up and saw a crane or a crow both of them were quarreling due to their quarrel some of the leaves from the tree fell on his head somewhere it is quoted as excreta anyo samji has told this dry leaves we will take it that dry leaves so some leaves fell on his head and he saw one crow and crane were quarreling he became very angry that he being seated there they are not aware that who is sitting and with that anger he just saw those birds and in an instant they were burnt into ashes so 
he was very happy unfortunately he was very happy swamiji says he was very happy <laughs> because he could burn that birds to ashes he was very glad swamiji makes a statement he was very glad almost overjoyed at this development of power he could burn the crow and the crane by a look now it was time for a bhiksha he was feeling hungry now he has to go back he has to go to a nearby village and beg his food he went to the village and stood in front of a house and uh, and chanted om narayana hari we have to chant then uh, a woman inside the house she said wait a moment wait a moment dear son i will give you bhiksha a little later he waited for a certain moment certain time and after his waiting for such a time also the woman did not turn out and gave him the bhiksha he was very much angry and was thinking in the mind swamiji says you wretched woman how dare you make me wait you do not know my power yet just as this moment the woman from the house she shouted here is neither a crow nor a crane then immediately he thought how could this woman know that i have burnt alle kursi alle faste kursi how could he how could she know that i have burnt those birds into ashes how could she being at home could learn and he patiently waited after a moment she came then she apologized and said i made you wait because my husband is ill and i was nursing him all my life i have struggled to do my duty when i was unmarried i looked up to upon my parents after marriage my deva is my pati i have done my duty towards my pati i don't know any of your yoga then he he asked how could you know by performing day my duty as a dharma patni i have gained this power if you want to know about it go to a vyadha in a particular place then he thought how i should i go to a vyadha then anyhow because she has told he went to a, he went in search of that vyadha vyadha means a hunter or a butcher he went in search of that vyadha it's also he is also called dharma vyadha he went in search of that vyadha in a particular place in a market then he saw this man this vyadha is cutting meat selling meat and bargaining and doing his business then the young man said swamiji's statement i will read the young man said lord help me is this the man from whom i am going to learn he is the incarnation of demon if not anything <laughs> he thinks he is the incarnation he is he, swamiji says he was very fat and <laughs> selling meat so he says he is the incarnation of a demon if he is anything just at moment that uh, vyadha saw this sanyasin and asked him oh did that woman send you here please come and take a seat till i complete my business you should imagine the state of that swami not this story <laughs> now swami nowadays will have that patience <laughs> that to if some is has got to good pita you can never expect to come to <laughs> vyadha never that pita who is protecting i don't misunderstand <laughs> i am not commenting on any pita but all the people surrounding that pita will never allow him that swami to come down <laughs> though the swami wants these people will not allow anyo he is he was made to sit in that butcher shop you have to imagine <laughs> the condition of that swami He is sitting there in that butcher shop, and this man is selling the meat, and Swami with akar cloth with a kamandalu waiting to hear what this vyadha will tell. And then after his, he completed his business, he said, "Please, sir, come to my home. Here the work is done." Then he has to walk all the way to his house, 
and then again that vyadha made him to sit at the door he went inside nursed his father nursed his mother gave them food and then came out of his house and then he said <coughs> now tell me what do you want then samji says the sanyasin asked him a few questions about soul and about god you should read it very attentively what did sanyasin asked to a vyada who was selling meat he said he did not ask to a devotee of ramkrishna who has taken mantra diksha no all this uh, presuppositions you have to you should have in the mind he is not asked to mangalanathanda who had read complete verse no he asked a vyada who is selling meat who is a hunter by profession and a butcher by profession he is asking him about questions about soul and about god and the vyada gave him a lecture which forms a part of uh, mahabharata which is called uh, vyada gita vyada gita is though i had read all these things earlier but now i understand all these things in a different light i didn't knew that the duty had so much value when you we were students we didn't knew this you see a vyada dharma vyada by performing his actions to its profession and being a son nursed his parents he attained to a place where he can explain about soul and god to a swami a swami or dan tapasya was enslaved to the powers of ashta uh, the tashtapashas um, so here by that's why samji is drawing our attention he is now this who our uh, sanyasin will ask a question why are you in that body he did not like this vyadha selling meat so he puts a question why are you in that body with such knowledge as yours why are you in a vyadha's body and doing such a filthy ugly work then samji say the sorry not that vyadha says my son replied the vyadha no duty is ugly no duty is impure my birth placed me in these circumstances and environments so he was he had perfect belief in it he was convinced in it he performed with that attitude and attained to illumination vyadha that's why samji says perform your duty according to your varna that you are to your birth then your position with this idea continue then you will do unselfish actions then you will be able to manifest your true nature which is atman or pure consciousness or god whatever may be the word the meaning is the same samji says anatta doing of the duty which belongs to my position that's why we we get lot of examples in even uh, um, our shashi maharaj when he went to one of the lecture in chennai he was supposed to he was i think he invited for a particular lecture or he used to go uh, every month once to that particular place on that particular day nobody turned up he himself was on the stage no devotee or a person to hear his lecture but what did he do he sat there he was supposed to give lecture for one hour or bhagavatam or something like that he sat spoke for one hour on bhagavatam and came back without any audience what swamiji says that is your position in the society if he was a monk in a forest then nothing is necessary of that sort a monk of an organization is supposed to spread the knowledge swadhyay pravachanabhyam na pramaditavyam so he has to do swadhyaya and pravachana accompanied by birth means what is our varna sanyasa varna now not the birth of a brahmin shudra kshatriya no now by birth means for a swami it is sanyasin what is your uh, actions or karma your tapas your dhyana your adhyana your purity your chastity these for forms the actions of a swami that is his birth now with respect to action what is your position you have x y z in a position as a sangha you have to perform it without any expectation ramkrishna ji what was the necessity for him he was a jivan mukta we are not jivan muktas ramkrishna ji was a jivan mukta he went there sat there spoke there came out though nobody was there so 
this duty that's why samji says duty is seldom sweet apply the grace of love love shines in freedom alone these things we have to remember and the for making it to ascertain it he has given the example of dharma vyada please contemplate on this idea of dharma vyada very important story then concluding samji makes a concluding important statement Swamiji says, he came across a great yogi in India. I think uh, he, there is a sage in India, a great yogi, one of the most wonderful men I have ever seen in my life. He, this most probably he may be Pavahari Bhava. You might have gone to Ghazipur. If you go to Kashi and uh, Saranath, it's very near to Saranath and uh, Saranath, not to Kashi, but near Saranath. You can go to Ghazipur. Still that uh, hermitage of uh, Pavahari Bhava is kept. I just went there to visit now there is no cave now all the mud have completely covered that cave there is no only the opening of that window is there but no cave exists now where pavari baba used to stay it's near saranath gazipur in uttar pradesh so i think uh, samji wonderful men i have ever seen in my life maybe it's pavari baba he has given one instruction to swami ji what is that instruction he says let the end and the means be joined into one let the end and the means be joined into one what do you mean by that when you are doing any work do not think of anything beyond how to join end and means while performing our actions forget everything expect that except that forgetting everything now in modern days we cannot use these terms because forgetting they cannot forget smartphone in thursday um, there was a youth convention in belgaum so there was a discussion on tapas then uh, simply they were asked the tapasya for you uh, almost 1000 uh, young men and women were there young children of college just it was told them refrain from using smartphone for one week everybody laughed means they cannot no samji says let the end and the means be joined into one for your information i gave that's the that's the modern trend but not for a karma yogi <laughs> ho so hold on to the means forgetting everything except that one holding on to it means there are two things in that important one thing is that while performing that action if we have a slightest inclination to the result we cannot hold on to the means you should never have even while doing even shri ram krishna makes one step further he goes one step further i have quoted this to you also i have narrated this incident when one sadbhutan ji was doing as a latu was performing his meditation in panchavati came back to sri ram krishna and said baba or thakur i could not concentrate my mind is restless then sri ram krishna asked him with what mental state you sat there before sitting for meditation what was the idea in your mind which is making you restless then he said latu says to sri ram krishna mother kali should give me some experience now with that idea i started doing japam then sri ram krishna says fool goal oriented japa will not lead to the concentration it will lead to restlessness of the mind you will not catch many important words even thinking that i will attain some purity by doing japa that is also an inclination towards the goal you know that this mantra convinced that this mantra will lead to god realization by taking mantra mantra alone nothing exists so any result oriented actions will not lead to concentration bahushaka hi anantascha 15th chapter bhagavad gita that's why don't when you perform perform this alone no inclination towards the result first thing second thing that we should know 
we should be convinced of what you should never perform such actions which is against attaining the goal means before fixing that means itself should be convinced of the means in what way i am telling you there is one of the discussion also how does my personal growth will help in the nation's growth that was also the first discussion was on that in the youth convention how does my personal growth will lead to the nation's growth so your personal growth should be so aligned that the nation economy or nation's greatness in all its entirety culture history will go up how by imbibing the qualities of the personalities who have made this country great you took you take this those gunas imbibe and through you yourself imbibing those qualities you are making yourself great and making your country great you will never do any actions which will make you at the first level ungrateful first to yourself itself to your family to your father to your mother to your sister to your brother no action should be performed which uh, no such action should be performed any actions which is pleasing to your parents to your society will certainly make your nations also great so be convinced of the means to the goal no inclination towards the result be convinced of the means towards that goal then only end and means be joined into one this is what he says let the end and the means be joined in one when you are doing any work do not think think anything beyond in the last two lines samji says right performance of the duties is time up i will just read and conclude it's already 6:45 right performance of the duties of any station in life without attachment to results leads to the highest realization of the perfection of the soul coming to the last para samji says to the grumbler he says duty performed by a worker not a sadhaka samji says to the grumbler all duties are distasteful nothing will ever satisfy him and his whole life is doomed to prove a failure let us work on doing as we go whatever happens to be uh, to be our duty and being ever ready to put our shoulders to the wheel putting our shoulders to wheel means taking responsibilities and be proactive taking responsibilities and being proactive naishkarma siddhi atra navadam navu vaktavyam he naishkarma siddhi we are not talking that is for advaita vedanti crossed all these duties level let us work on doing as we go whatever happens to be our duty and being ever ready to put our shoulders to the wheel then surely shall we see the light so with this we'll conclude it's already time up next sunday we'll continue with the new chapter om shanti 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 hari om tat sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu